Hello, everyone. Welcome back to JSA TV and JSA Podcasts, where we're covering the latest stories, trends, and innovations with leaders in global connectivity, real estate, and the networks within. I'm Candace Ipos with JSA, and I'm here with Matthew Rie uh, from Danfoss. You are Business Development Director for Europe and in the data center um, sector for Danfoss. So it is uh, Danfoss's first time on JSA TV, so welcome. And if you wouldn't mind just giving us a quick overview of what the company does for the data center industry. Yeah, for sure. Thanks a lot, uh, first of all, for inviting us um, to talk about Danforce and what we think about sustainability. So uh, to answer your first question, so Danforce is a Danish company that celebrates this month uh, 90 years old. Uh, it's still a family company, wow. but with 42,000 employees, uh, 100 factory worldwide. And what we are doing mainly are, is to produce components mm -hmm. Uh, mainly for HVAC OEM manufacturer like chillers, cry units, uh, heavenly units, but not only. And uh, and yes, we, we we work on data center for more than two decades, hmm. um, but through through our, our, our customer. And but and we have a special focus on sustainability for decades. Uh, let's say it's, it's our core business. And uh, and that's great to be here because it's one of the few events with a special focus on sustainability. Mm -hmm. It's something that we were expecting for years, but now it's not a trendiness anymore. It's something standard, and that's great that finally we have an exhibition dedicated to this topic. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. I think we can all agree on that. Um, and it's and it's such an incredible topic. There's so many great conversations yeah. happening this week around that. Um, so I'm glad I'm glad uh, to have you all on JSA TV. Thank Two you. decades in the data center yeah. industry and 90 years total. It's a, an incredible achievement. It's still a family business. So yeah. um, so we'll go ahead and jump right into that sustainability topic. So yeah. if you could tell us a, a little bit about what Dan Foss has already achieved in that area and also what you're kind of working towards. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's a long story. <laughs> Uh, but we have a few minutes, so I will try to be quick. Uh, so basically, uh, sustainability for Danfoss is very important uh, for some reasons. One, we want to be different from the competition. Um, it's our core business. Uh, we want to improve uh, all the time our components in order to be environmental friendly, eco-friendly. And also another topic that is very important is we want to attract and retain the new generation that mm. is very focused on sustainability more than our generation, you know. Mm. And so what we have decided starting from 2021 is to sign the uh, science-based target initiative mm -hmm. when our goal is to be carbon neutral by 2030 globally and wow. all fact of Danfoss factories. Mm. Uh, it's, it's tough uh, mm -hmm. because, yes, as I mentioned before, we have 100 factory mm. worldwide, so it's, it's not easy, but we want to achieve at least for scope one and scope two. Mm -hmm. And as a result, we already reached it on our headquarters in Denmark. So mm -hmm. our headquarters are already carbon neutral on scope one and scope two. And we are working a lot on, on scope three. Okay. Uh, and it's, uh, it's not an easy task. It's not an mm. easy task, but we, uh, we, we have uh, a clean baseline and monthly uh, tracking just to, to, to reach those targets. And we work also closely to, with our customers and suppliers to uh, decarbonize, to have some security, and also to, uh, especially at Dunfoss Company, to be more diverse, more inclusive with mm -hmm. employer, employees. And, uh, and, well, and we try to, to reach those targets. So uh, I mentioned what we have done in, 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 in Norborg, in our headquarters. On the circularity, basically, we, um, as I said, we, talk, we work with key, key customers and suppliers mm -hmm. in order to, uh, to develop new products when they can be 100% uh, recycled, mm. so that's, that's, that's interesting. And regarding uh, diversity, uh, this is also something very important for us. Uh, we, as I said, we try to attract and retain the new generation, but we want also to have, uh, at least in 2030, 80% of diverse management team. Mm. So you, we don't care about where we come from, what mm -hmm. is your gender, your sexual orientation. No, we, mm -hmm. we want to be diverse. Mm -hmm. And regarding women, because we were talking about women uh, mm -hmm. a few minutes ago, 
uh, in 2025, we want that 30% of mm. women leadership inside Danfoss. Mm. Maybe it's not enough, but at least we try to yeah. to to be maybe one day to be equal 50 50 50 you know 50 women 50 uh, 50 percent of men but at yeah. least for in two years we want to reach this goal of 30 percent of women working on uh, as leaders mm. inside Danfoss. Yeah. yeah well you yeah. know i love to hear that yeah. and uh it's it's incredible to see a company as big as danfoss taking over uh, taking on these really incredible you know tough challenges but yeah. really really setting goals and holding yourself accountable to those goals and, and moving forward every single day, you know, toward yeah. them. So, so well done there. Thank you. But yeah, it's, we try to do our best. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's all you can do. Right. Yeah. Um, okay. So, and then can we talk a little bit about the market shift when it comes to sustainability and what that looks like from your perspective? Well, I can talk only about Europe because, mm -hmm. because this, is, this is basically the market we, we are focused on. Uh, well, everybody is talking about sustainability. Mm -hmm. What we have seen recently is like, for example, Germany is introducing le legislation for sustainability. Mm -hmm. uh, I think they decide uh, something maybe last week. Mm -hmm. And we have seen that uh, the European Union is also working on something, mm -hmm. but we still don't have some, some further information. Uh, we have seen also that uh, there are more and more eat reuse requests. Mm -hmm. Um, and we have to see when it's feasible. At least mm -hmm. in the Nordics, it's something common. So everybody is using it we use. Uh, and it's a kind of showroom for the rest of Europe. Uh, mm -hmm. All the other uh, European cost, uh, co countries want to do the same. But it, it's not easy as uh, I, I would think. So uh, it depends on what you are on your, um, on your neighborhood. And you have to see if you are able to make it we use or not. But mm -hmm. it's something that... Uh, at least in some countries, design companies focus on data centers, uh, want to offer as a standard, not as a trend, as a standard. So every time they have a, a new data center project, they want mm -hmm. to uh, offer the, the eat reuse. Mm -hmm. And yesterday we talked a lot about this. There were some workshops about re eat reuse. Um, and this is basically the trend, the, basically the shift that we have seen recently in, in Europe regarding sustainability. So registration. And it we use for for data centers. Yeah. All right, excellent. Thank you yeah. for that. And so yeah. I think you know all of our thought leaders in the hot seat. Many of them we ask about trends. So yeah. can we end end with that question? Maybe, and it's just an open question. Any any particular trend that you might want to talk well, about? Well, you know the trends that everybody is talking all days is AI. Mm. So AI, 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 mm -hmm. and uh, and that's interesting because it's. Uh, it's changing a little bit the market, uh, but we still have a big question mark. So what is AI finally? Yeah. And because we can use it for uh, to improve the energy efficiency, the services, and there's a lot of things to do. Uh, what we saw uh, is that in terms of cooling capacity, it's uh, another topic. Mm -hmm. So the density on the uh, server rack is higher. So that means it will boost in our opinion, the liquid cooling, maybe direct to chip or liquid emission. So we are working on that uh, mm -hmm. because we think that this uh, this technology will have more and more presence in the market. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think it will be mainstream. Who knows? Maybe in ten years or or, or maybe more. But uh, we have to work on it. And mm -hmm. so uh, we have uh, inside our data center team, we have. Uh, innovation director uh, that is uh, try to develop new components that mm -hmm. can be uh, catastrophic of the liquid cooling technology, like liquid immersion and director chip, mm -hmm. and and this is something that we are uh, we, we try to uh, well, to 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 improve and and uh, always with the target of being sustainable mm -hmm. and. Also, uh, making components that could be uh, recycled. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, as a trend, uh, especially uh, AI is pushing, and and we know that uh, at least liquid cooling could mm -hmm. be the solution that could uh, 
uh, at least um, well, cool the, the, this kind of uh, new technology that is coming in the data center very, very fast. Yeah. 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 Well, liquid cooling and AI, I mean, the buzzwords, you're hitting on two of the big, yeah. <laughs> two, of the, two of the big three probably at the conference this week. So yeah. that's amazing. Uh, thank you so much for chatting with us about sustainability. Yeah, thanks for inviting and uh, it's, it was a pleasure to discuss with you. Yeah, same to you. Same yeah. to you. We really enjoyed it. And uh, to our viewers, um, happy networking and keep hanging out with us here at JSA TV. We'll be here all day. Thank you. Thank you.